2024 and it is time that you finally glow up for good. If you want to get hot, if you want to feel healthy, if you want to become the best version of yourself, this is the video for you. You are going to make this your year and hard launch your dream it girl hottest self before the end of January. And guess what? This video is going to be your fast pass to success on your it girl glow up self-improvement journey. By the end of this episode, I am going to reveal all of the micro habits that you can adopt to make 2024 your year, to start thriving, to become the it girl, to become the hottest, happiest, healthiest version of you. And don't worry, I know what you're thinking, but this is not one of those micro habit videos where you're gonna say, oh my goodness, I've heard these habits 101 times. Absolutely not. These are gonna be unique micro habits that you have not heard before that is going to help you finally glow up for good. The only question left is, are you ready to get up and glow? <laughs> Welcome back to the Get Up and Glow podcast. I am your host, Madison Haynes, your self-improvement glow up fairy godmother, and I am so excited for today's episode. You know I don't gatekeep the tips, and I am here to deliver you what you need to become the best version of you this year, and I'm going to get right into the video. Okay, so today's podcast chapters are all about micro habits, how to do small little actionable steps to get you to your dream goals. We're going to talk about how to build a habit, overcoming the failure of habit change, how to turn your New Year's resolutions, your goals into actual habits. Jealous people, of course, I'm going to be revealing the it girl glow up micro habits that you should start now. And we're also going to dive in deep about how to build a habit, how to quit a bad habit and the purpose behind them and how you are going to make these habits into your daily routine so you can actually be a whole new you by the end of 2024. But that is not all. I am going to share the best kept secret of how you can stay motivated throughout the entire year. So stay tuned for that. Every single one of these chapters has been carefully cultivated to give you exactly what you need to be able to make 2024 the best year yet. So if you listen all the way to the end, you will discover exactly how you can take your New Year's resolutions, turn them into daily habits, and use those habits as fuel to build up your dream life. So let's get right into it, girly. Chapter number one, overcoming the failure of habit change. Why do you find it so hard to change your lifestyle? Why do you randomly in the middle of the night wake up and have the sudden urge to change your life, to improve yourself? So you start on it, you feel great, only to just fall off a few weeks later. Girly, that is okay, we have all been there, truly. Now here's the thing, if you want these it girl ultimate glow up micro habits to genuinely work for you, you need to know how to be consistent. You need to keep yourself motivated, otherwise they will not work for you. So first, before you get the ultimate it girl glow up micro habits that are going to help you become hot, help you live the dream life that you have been envisioning and planning all over your Pinterest board, let's talk about how to remain consistent. You will never see lasting progress if you do not master the art of self-discipline. Now here's the thing, everybody talks about the book called Atomic Habits, but such an underhyped book is called Essential Zen Habits by Leo Babata. This book is shorter, but it is the blueprint of understanding how to make a habit last. But guess what, girly? I am going to condense this book, all of the key factors that I've taken away that will change your life. I'm going to condense them and share them to you in this short episode. <laughs> so by the end of this episode, not only are you going to get the it girl glow up micro habits and the secrets revealed on how how you can stay motivated, but it would have been as like you had read the entire book. <laughs> because I do not gatekeep on the Get Up and Glow podcast. The book Essential Zen Habits essentially <laughs> explains that building habits starts first by understanding your mind movie. And I know what you're thinking, what the heck is a mind movie and why should I care about it? You're probably thinking, just give me the tips, just list them off super fast so I can go and I can start working on them now. But let me tell you this, if you genuinely want to change your life in 2024, if you want to make Make it the best year. If you truly want to become the it girl, you need to understand these steps first to make the habits I'm about to tell you that you've never heard before actually work for you. So be committed to your self-improvement journey and literally listen and take notes, take your mental notes or your take your notes after to understand the life-changing secrets that I'm about to share with you. 
This is your fast pass to success. So Essential Zen Habits talks about the mind movie. So the mind movie is essentially a projector in your mind that plays a movie and how you think your life should play out, what your dream life is. So you vision yourself doing something, working for a specific job, living in a specific place. And you think based on your dream vision that is in your head, that life should be like that. So because of your mind movie, you go and make habits that are going to get you closer towards it. And you think that those habits should be easy. They should be fun. They shouldn't be extremely hard. And what what this essentially does is it sabotages your success rate in achieving those habits. So the book talks about something called the childish mind. And that is the thing where it feels discomfort and you think, oh, this habit is hard. Like, I don't want to wake up in the morning. This is, this sucks. Like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. It is cold. I just want to go back to sleep. I don't want to wake up early and go to the gym. So essentially your mind movie fuels that motivation behind why you want to do something. But the childish mind prevents you from doing that because it tells you, oh, this is uncomfortable. Like, I just want to stay in my comfort zone. I just want to stay relaxed. And it essentially serves the current self opposed to your future self. So why do you keep struggling with actually adopting new habits? And why is it so easy for you to start a new habit for a day, maybe a week, maybe even a month, but you never actually stick to it? Here's the answer. You struggle with habit change because you have an unrealistic expectation of how things are going to turn out. You spend a lot of time scrolling on TikTok. You see the beautiful, beautiful girls with the beautiful, beautiful apartments getting everything that you have and you think that is easy. You think, well, if I just go to the gym a few times a week, I should get those washboard abs. Or if I work really hard, I should get a, a salary of 100K and be able to afford gorgeous furniture all the time in my apartment, right? What you don't see is those influencers working so hard to be visually appealing. Those influencers jobs is to have the perfect vision of your own mind movie to make you want to follow them, to pull you in. But what you don't see is the piles of boxes all over their apartment or the dishes in the sink or how they spent hours cleaning or hiring a cleaning service before that so their apartment looks gorgeous. You don't see the tears. You don't see the struggle. You don't see when they're in sweatpants with acne all over their faces because they just had a breakout. Or you don't see the hours they spend working on scripting videos, filming videos, editing those videos just so you can have your weekly content. Everything in life that is truly worth having or you feel accomplished in having is hard. Relationships are hard. Working a job is hard. Having a well-kept home is hard. Maintaining your health and your physical beauty is hard. And if you truly want to transform your life and adopt habits in 2024, you need to start sticking to the things that is hard for your future self. Let go of how things are supposed to be. Nothing has to be perfect and aesthetic all the time. Not every single day you're going to be successful. Some days you are going to fall off your goals, but make this a point that the next day you get up and you continue to try. Because when your expectations aren't met, when you start working so hard and you start eating healthy and going to the gym and you are not seeing the same results as the other person that you are following on Instagram, you're going to feel discouraged. You're going to say, what's the point? I'm never going to look like this. I am never going to be like this girl. I am never going to live my dream life. So you start working on your goal and then you feel discouraged and you tell yourself that you can never have it. So you fall off. But here's your sign to not think like that. Strive for grace, not perfection. Because every single person that you see and you compare yourself to and you're like, I want what they have. That has been years, decades in the making of building small little habits, adding on more small habits to create a sustainable lifestyle change. So here's your sign to turn away from your mind movie. Yes, use it as motivation, but do not feel discouraged when your progress or your self-improvement glow up journey does not look like how you think it should. Okay, let's get into the next chapter, how you are going to turn your New Year's resolutions, your goals into micro habits. Now, if you want to truly adopt and get the most out of these it girl glow up habits I'm about to share with you, you need to start turning your goals into habits that last. And here's how. You need to understand and learn a key habit. And that is when something goes wrong in your self-improvement journey, when you feel discouraged, when something is disrupted in your daily routine, to not let that get you down. Notice your feelings of discomfort. Notice your anxiety. Notice the negative emotions that surrounds the goals or the habits that you're working on. And instead of that making you stop, allow them to come in, process those feelings, journal them out, and keep going. 
Get to know the feeling of uncertainty. Get to know feeling uncomfortable to some extent because that is what's going to improve you as a person because you are going to get to a point in your glow up journey where things are not going to be easy, where it's going to be overwhelming at times. It's going to be hard. Sometimes you're going to have to take a break and you're going to need to find the motivation to start again. But here's the thing. When you miss a day or two of your habits, let's say you were sick, you have two choices. You can feel horrible about it and say, well, I might as well just quit because now I realized how much easier it is, it is and how much more time I have laying in bed all day. Or you could decide, I'm going to get up now that I feel better. I'm going to restart my habits. I'm going to reintroduce them into my routine because I made a commitment to myself and that is important to me. Now, if making a commitment to yourself is not working, you could try telling other people that you made that commitment and see if that fuels you to keep going. Because here's the thing, now that you know that not only you are keeping yourself accountable, but someone else is or someone else knows about it, you are going to be so much more motivated to actually start keeping up with that habit. Because now it's not just about letting yourself down, but it's about letting someone else down or having someone else recognize that you didn't do the commitment that you made to yourself. And another thing that I think is so important for you to continuously improve yourself, to adopt these micro habits and make them lasting, to genuinely change your life and become that it girl that you see all over the internet that you want to be, it starts with you and it starts with your commitment to yourself. But it is unrealistic to think you're going to wake up every single day and just instantly have this habit. When you do fall off, don't be hard on yourself, but think about why you fell off. Were you sick or did you stay up late the night before? Did you go out drinking and got hung over? Write down the reasons behind why you missed a day or why you weren't able to achieve that habit and see the patterns. Now, these patterns are going to represent your bad habits or your triggers, and you are going to know that those habits don't make you feel good about yourself. You're going to know that those habits are doing those things are going to prevent you from reaching your goals, reaching the point you want to be. So you're going to stop them or try to prevent the doing those triggers at all costs. If you know that having five drinks is going to result in you being super hungover, super unproductive and feeling like crap the next day because you rotted in bed the entire day, don't have five drinks. Now, I'm not saying that you can never drink again, but what I'm saying is maybe instead of five drinks, you have three, you have fun, you feel good, but then you can actually wake up decently early the next day. You can actually go to the gym. You can actually work on the things you need to get done. The power of micro habits will change your life because it's these small choices we make every single day that we are consistent with that define our life. Those become a lifestyle. So it is very important when you're sticking to these micro habits, which are coming soon, that you practice what I just told you. And okay, next quick chapter, let's talk about jealous people. Because here's the thing, when you start implementing these micro habits and you stick to them, because now you know how to be consistent, you are able to define your triggers and you're working on them, people are going to notice. They're going to be like, wow, she looks great. Like she's working on herself or man, like something is different. What is it about her? Which will feel so amazing, yes. And I'm sure you'll get many compliments, which is going to be just more motivation on this glow up self-improvement journey. But there is going to be people who are envious, people who are going to bring you down. People are going to notice that you are working on themselves and it's going to make them feel bad for not doing it. And they, you are going to serve as a reminder to them of everything they could be doing, but they are not. And they're going to look for ways to justify their own actions, their own beliefs. And the way they're going to justify that is by trying to nitpick and criticize you. Now, I just did an episode on all the things criticism, how to handle it. So I won't get too deep into this. This is why it's a quick chapter because girly, I am saving your time. I'm here to deliver the actual tea that you need to know. But if you're interested in learning more about how to handle that criticism, listen to the last episode. But essentially, when you're gonna make changes in your life, people are not gonna like it. Some people will get jealous of it and they won't tell you straight up, oh, well, you make me feel bad about myself. Instead, what they're going to do is try to bring you down. Why are you so dressed up? wow, like you're really going to eat less like healthy all the time. You're not going to eat like junk food at night with us. Like why? Or like, really, you're not going to go and get drunk with us on a random Tuesday night. Like you used to go out on work nights all of the time. Like what is so different about you? People are going to recognize you're changing and they're going to nitpick you. They're going to make you feel bad about it. They're going to make you feel like you're a different person, but don't fear that. You know, when people say, oh my goodness, you've really changed. Yes. And why haven't you? change is a good thing as humans we should be changing and evolving through our entire life why would you want to choose to stay stagnant why would you want to choose to not improve yourself to not make different choices to not elevate your way of thinking as adults as through our entire lives we are going to get wiser we are going to get better 
So why is change so bad? So let this be your sign to not seek validation, to back yourself, and to know that if anyone criticizes you, it has nothing to do with you. Keep going on and keep improving yourself. Okay, now let's get into the reason why you clicked on this video. Chapter four, the it girl glow up micro habits that you can start right now to transform yourself into the hot, happy, smart, perfect, well, as perfect as you can be, <laughs> it girl. Now I carefully designed these it girl glow up tips to hopefully be things that you have never heard before. Cause we all know to drink a ton of water. We all know to take our vitamins. I've talked about them on further episodes too. So I'm trying to give you the glow up tips that I adopt on a, and I use on a daily basis that I don't often hear online. And we are going to go into three categories of your glow up micro habits. One is going to be your physical glow up. One is going to be your self improvement journey glow up. And the other is going to be your health and fitness. So let's get right into it. Okay, first up, the physical glow up micro habits that you can start every single day to completely elevate your appearance, to feel better, to feel hotter. Just look in the mirror and be like, wow, something's different. Like, look at me. Like, first off, <laughs> it starts with you. So you need to go every day and whenever you look in the mirror, you give yourself a little compliment, okay? You go inside, ooh, look, she's looking good today. Like, I look good. Say one good thing about yourself every time you pass by or just paint, don't nitpick, you know, maybe you are having a breakout right now, but instead of being like, my skin sucks, I'm so ugly, be like, my hair looks great today. Compliment yourself more because the more you compliment yourself, the more positive things you will start to see. Not only that, but when you enter a room, instead of nitpicking yourself, if you talk positively about yourself, people are going to see what you see in yourself. If you go and enter a room with your, you know, shoulders hunched and closed off and say, oh my gosh, my outfit. Yeah. You know, there's a little bit of toothpaste stain on it, but like no one would have recognized that toothpaste stain. You just brought attention to it. And now everyone will know because you called attention to it when nobody would have even realized they probably would have just thought your outfit was super cute and went on with the event. So start that micro habit by number one, always saying positive things about yourself every single time you pass the mirror. I know, I know it's probably super cringy and you think like, oh, that's so vain, but it's not. And don't call attention to the little things that you are insecure about because nobody will notice them unless you point them out. Okay. Everyone talks about using lash and brow serum, but no one talks about what one to use. And I use the e.l.f. Lash and Brow Serum. It's literally one of the cheapest serums you can get on Amazon, but it is going to make your eyelashes and eyebrows look so good. If you are looking for eyelash growth, eyebrow growth, try the e.l.f. Lash Serum. Apply it to your eyes and eyebrows every night before you go to bed. You can thank me later. Drink spearmint and green tea every single day. Now I know we are all coffee girlies. I am a coffee girly. I cannot try matcha. I've tried it. I can't do it. I love my espresso. But instead of that second cup of coffee, I now replace it for a green tea. It has a little bit of caffeine and there's so many health benefits for it. Green tea is rich in antioxidants and it's going to help give you that clear, vibrant skin. It genuinely will help improve your complexion and if you consistently drink it, you will notice a difference. And the same goes with spearmint tea. If you are struggling with acne and breakouts, my goodness, spearmint, not peppermint, but spearmint tea will help you so much. It also is so good at regulating your hormones and as women i've talked about this on the podcast before you need to understand your cycle more on that later but just know spearmint tea girly get on that okay this is one that is not talked about enough but drink kombucha on an empty stomach every single morning every single morning i drink my little kombucha out of my martini glass because it's fabulous and again do things that make you happy <laughs> we're romanticizing 2024 and this has helped bloating so much if you bloat, if you're one of those people that have like significant bloating, kombucha on an empty stomach. Kombucha is packed full of probiotics. It is so good for helping you, your body to absorb the nutrients. Drinking on an empty stomach will heighten its impact on your health <laughs> and you will see you will notice a difference even after a week of drinking one little glass of kombucha every morning so when you wake up when you're doing your makeup and listening to the get up and glow podcast do it you will thank me later and your body oh my goodness you will see a difference this has been the biggest thing i've done in 2023 okay so obviously you're a beverage girly but apple cider vinegar oh my goodness girl get on that dilute apple cider vinegar 
in a cup of water, drink it with a straw. So the acidity of the apple cider vinegar doesn't ruin your teeth and animal. So please drink it with a straw. Do not shoot it straight. No matter how many videos you see of people doing that, it will ruin your stomach lining, but drink it before meals. Apple cider vinegar is going to help you feel fuller. It's going to help you reduce your insulin spike. So when you are eating meals with like a lot of starch or a lot of sugar, your insulin spike, your blood sugar levels will go up. But by drinking apple cider vinegar, it's going to help regulate them, which will regulate your moods. You won't overeat as much. It's going to help your health. There's 101 more benefits. I will save your time, but just know, try it. Okay. Tell me how you feel. Let me know. Hopefully it will help you glow up in 2024. Okay. This one you probably aren't thinking about doing, but girl, when you're washing your hair, okay. I already talked about the glow up tips about the, you know, the rubber scrub, scrub that you exfoliate your hair and double shampooing. You already know that because they've been talked about before, but when you're doing your hair care routine in the shower, put your hair up in a claw clip and exfoliate your back with a microfiber exfoliating brush. This will help you prevent your back knee. And then you have those open, cute little backless shirts or dresses. It's going to look great. Okay, this one's so boring, but it is so important. Invest in your dental hygiene. Trust me, if you are younger and you have your parents' benefits right now or wherever you're from, uh, in Canada, we are very blessed with a good healthcare system. But once we're older and we are working full time, we don't have the same benefits as we did when we were kids. So brush your teeth twice a day, okay? The people who are out there who are not doing it, it is okay. It is okay. And I know you're like, oh, it's such an annoying habit start it. Start brushing your teeth at night. When you wash your face, floss. If you don't want to actually use those little floss, actual like whatever, use the picks and floss your teeth. Buy an electric toothbrush. This is going to help your teeth not only look better, look whiter, but it's going to help your oral hygiene. This will make your breath smell better. This will make your teeth just be better. And when you go to that dentist, you're not going to have a thousand dollar bill because you need a cavity. We are young, we're gorgeous, gorgeous girls right now, but as we age, if we don't care with, about our teeth, we are not going to be as hot, as popping as we are right now. So let's focus on preventative maintenance now. Take care of your teeth, take care of your skin, massage your face, let's prevent all of the things that we want to prevent when we're aging in our 20s or younger, because then we're gonna go into be like 60s, 70s, man, we're gonna be hot little grandmas, okay? <laughs> Okay, for my girlies with medium or light complexions, take a little bit of a lavender color corrector and mix it in with your foundation or mix it in with your moisturizer or sunscreen or whatever you're using and apply it to your skin. This is going to help you glow. You're gonna look so radiant. Also, pro tip, use Vaseline on your nail beds for your fingers and toes before you go to sleep and you're going to wake up with healthy glowing cuticles, especially if you do this over a long period of time. But on the topic of Vaseline, if you are applying Vaseline to your lips, please stop use anything else. I know it feels good in the moment, but it's actually going to dry your lips out longer over a period of time. Now, if you want a life changing glow up tip, you need to learn about color seasons. Do you ever just wear an outfit and you're like, I don't know what it is about this shirt. Like there's nothing special about it, but I just look so good. It is probably because you are wearing a color that is within your color season. Depending on our hair color, our eye color, our skin tones, our skin undertones, there are specific colors that is going to make us look gorgeous. Use that to your advantage. Do a color season test, figure out the colors that are going to look best on you, and just try to start wearing them more in 2024. Genuinely doing just that one thing is going to help you look so much better. It's going to make your eyes pop more, your skin is going to look better. And it sounds wild, but I genuinely believe dressing in your color season could do more for you than any amount of makeup could, especially when you avoid unflattering colors. And yes, I know they can be sad, especially if it's one that you like. I'm not saying don't ever wear it, but what I'm saying is just try to lean more into the ones that do look good on you. Every single person that you see on the red carpet, they're dressing for their color season, and that is one of their many reasons why they look good. Also, so I don't know who needs to hear this, but make sure your hair is a complimentary shade, okay? I know there's probably girlies out here who want to be blonde so badly. I was with you. I bleached my hair blonde. It was horrible. I did not look good. I instantly glue down because my hair was dry. It was dead. The blonde became like brassy because my hair is just naturally so dark. My eye color just did not complement the blonde in my hair and it completely just did not do anything to help my appearance. It wasn't until I was like, you know what? 
I know my limit. I'm going to play within it, like the OLG Canadian lottery <laughs> motto. And I am just going to stick to the darks. And that is when I really came in to my glow up journey and I felt more vibrant. So if you want to experiment with hair color, sure, but just try to consider colors that are going to look really well on you with the same, you know, mindset as like working within your color season. Okay. You might've heard this one before, but it actually is, it works wonders, but that is apply highlighter to the tip of your nose and on your decolletage when the light is going to hit you. There's just something about like the little highlighter on the nose and on your like the chest bones oh it looks gorgeous you're gonna look so nice girly <laughs> okay i already know that everyone tells you to wear spf but i know you're not doing that every day so listen to me do it every day okay sunscreen on your face on your neck and on your hands i know oh why are you it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's winter it's dark no i'm not going outside today girl wear sunscreen every day. Trust me, your future self is going to thank you so much when you don't have sunspots, when your wrinkles are significantly reduced and your skin is protected from the UV rays. The it girls know this and they already do it. So wearing SPF be a daily habit in your new glow up routine. Eyebrows, tint them. Oh my goodness. This can take you from a two to a 10. Genuinely tint your eyebrows once every two weeks. You're not going to have to fill them in as much. They're going to be predominant. It's like, it's going to save you time on your makeup routine and having good, well-kept eyebrows will completely change your face. You can get an eyebrow dye kit off of Amazon for like $20. They're the exact same kits that you use if you go get your eyebrows dyed at a salon, but you can literally do it for half the price and the dye will last you throughout the entire year. Dry brushing will help you with your lymphatic drainage. It's going to help exfoliate your skin. It is going to feel so good. So let the micro habit of 2024 be before you get in the shower every day, you give yourself a little, you know, dry brushing. And I know you already heard them, but I'm going going to give them a rapid fire and that is face massaging rosemary hand mint hair oil for hair growth now let 2024 be the year you experiment with new makeup look have different eyeshadow shades going on try out having the eyeliner in your crease oh my goodness this will make your eyes pop take a little bit of a darker shade apply it underneath your eyes wow you don't need to have tons of eye mascara all over the bottom of your lashes where you have fallout you know a little bit of a dark shade with eyeshadow gorgeous another unpopular opinion you might not want to hear but consider getting rid of the very bushy lash extensions or and going for ones that are a little bit more natural looking same with the acrylic nails if you have acrylic nails that are extremely long maybe try out just going a little bit shorter now this it girl glow up tip truly will transform your photos how you look when you go out and that is glitter body lotion. The lotion from Bath and Body Works is amazing. You can put it all over your legs, all over your arms, all over your chest for like a night out at the club or just going out to a nice restaurant or literally just because you're taking photos and you want the light to catch your skin and make it look luminous and beautiful use lotion. I have put all of my friends on this and they now swear by it because it actually makes a difference. And yes, you will look sparkly and glittery when you go out, but what is wrong with that? I feel like that is such an it girl move. Just go to a little party and like have a little glitter on you, you know, like it's fun. <laughs> Spray your signature scent into your hairbrush and brush your hair with it. So when someone walks by you, when someone's hugging you, they can smell your perfume in your hair and you're just going to smell amazing. Okay, now let's get into these self-improvement micro habits that you can start now to completely transform your life, to improve yourself, to become that girl, to live your dream life and achieve all of your goals in 2024. Start by spending five minutes every single day on a project that you've always wanted to start, but you're too scared to. If you wanted to become a content creator, if you wanted to become an author, if you want to have that giant, beautiful job, do one thing that is going to get you closer to it and just spend five minutes a day doing it. You don't have to tell anyone that you're starting it it can just be for you it can literally be just like you pretending that you have that thing already and you're already working on it because those five minutes a day are telling you that your dreams can become a reality you're telling yourself that you could have that and that is going to help you manifest those dreams coming true read the news daily and yes i know this sounds so boring but it is so important to know what's going on to figure out you know and to improve our financial literacy gorgeous gorgeous girls the it girl knows what's going on in the world think about serena vanderwoodson think about blair waldorf they went to these big events and they were able to talk politics they were able to talk finance they knew what was going on and that is such an eloquent thing to be able to do as a woman so spend five minutes when you're drinking your morning coffee drinking your morning matcha 
reading the news. Get into the habit of choosing comfort for your future self over your current self. Just because it is hard, just because you don't want to do it now, if you know that you're going to do that habit and it's going to help yourself in the future, do it. For instance, if getting out of bed earlier in the morning sucks, but you know that once you get out of bed after five minutes of being droggy, you are going to be so much happier because you're going to have all of that time back to have such a good morning. And you know, when you do get up early, your future self says, oh wow, I'm so glad I actually did that get out of bed. Get into the habit of just waking 15 minutes earlier than normal. You don't have to have a 5 a.m. morning routine to be that girl. Start small. Say, I'm going to wake up 15 more minutes and then you can even say, and as a reward, when I do that, I will spend that 15 minutes spending the first few minutes of my morning enjoying something. Maybe you wake up and you read a book with your favorite iced coffee. Maybe you go and you do a stretching or a yoga routine. Spend 15 minutes just waking up early and doing that something for yourself. A life-changing micro habit is to listen to self-improvement books or self-improvement content while you get ready in the morning. On YouTube, there is the book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I am listening to it right now as I get ready and it has changed my life. So make 2024 the year when you dedicate, you know, you have to do your makeup anyways. So habit stack, listen to something that's going to help you get to where you want to be this year, opposed to just like listening to music or listening to whatever. Spend that like 15 minutes when you're doing your makeup in the morning fueling your self-improvement, your glow up journey. I want you to download Duolingo right now and get started. It's literally five minutes of your day and you put yourself into the position to start learning a new language. And how cool would it be at the end of this year where you're like, yep, I can speak French. <laughs> C'est magnifique. <laughs> je m'appelle Madison. Je parle français avec Duolingo. <laughs> start the Pomodoro method, okay? I want you to go to Amazon or thrift or just set a timer on your phone of 30 minutes you know flip the timer over you get to watch the sand go down it's aesthetically pleasing it motivates you to work harder because you see the time fleeting you're reminded that your time is so valuable and get to work if you struggle with motivation that is your answer literally the pomodoro method is just working for 30 minutes and then five minute breaks it's going to keep you motivated it's going to not make you burnt out and it's going to help you achieve your goals way faster download the app 28 it is a cycle tracking app for women your life will be changed as a woman if you can't say to me right now like a name the four phases of your cycle you need to learn about that and it's not a boring thing you will literally download this app and based on whatever phase of your cycle you're in it will tell you your emotions it will tell you what your mood is for most likely it will tell you how you should be thinking or what the kinds of things you should be doing in your career for your workouts for eating in your friendships in your relationship and every single thing it will tell you based on the exact day that you are in your cycle it is so true you'll wake up and be like wow i don't hate myself i don't feel ugly it's just my hormones convincing myself that i do or the days where you wake up and you're like wow i feel amazing i feel so chatty why is it it's because of the phase of your cycle you are in you need to understand that it's going to help you feel so much better on those bad days because you can realize that there's nothing wrong with you it is literally just your own hormones as a woman impacting the way you feel and your mind a fun micro habit should be making someone's day every day add this to your new year's resolutions if you don't have it already you should just strive to be a better person. I feel like in the self-improvement glow up community, we often talk about how to achieve our own goals, how to become hotter for ourselves, And it's very much self-obsession, which is a good thing. Like we should love ourselves and be obsessed with improving ourselves and backing ourselves and because you want that self-love in your self-improvement journey, yes. But part of that truly is investing time in your friendships in creating healthy, strong relationships in blessing your family and other people too, strangers that you don't expect anything from because being a positive person is going to attract so much more positivity into your own life too and not only that like you shouldn't want to be a good person because it benefits you but you should want to be a good person because it benefits the world do that make someone's day every day send that text message to the friend that you haven't connected with and say i am so proud of you go and buy someone a coffee who's behind you in line do one act of kindness every single day and you will become a happier person start the micro habit of learning how to handle criticism so when you get it instead of trying to respond and back yourself and fight stop accept the criticism for what it is try to understand that other person's perspective from their own point of view know that that criticism often has nothing to do with you or it is to help you grow and learn on your self-improvement journey 
and then let it go. I talked about this in so much more detail and if you want to learn more, you can listen to the last episode of the Get Up and Glow podcast. Now this micro habit will change your life and if you are someone who spirals about things that you've said in the past that, oh my gosh, I might have offended somebody or maybe someone said something to you and you can't stop thinking about it and you go and spiral and it's the whole thing of like, I don't care, I know I'm good enough, but then you kind of feel like you still care and then you're like talking about it and talking about it and trying to get over it and it's just the cycle repeats. When you have that bad emotion, when someone says something to you, process it, journal about it, give it a few minutes of your time and then let it go. And yes, I know it's so much easier said than done, but here's the thing. If you cannot end your spiral, just force yourself to. Just force yourself after you process it the first time and you already know you're aware of your habits and you've dealt with it in a healthy manner, those like thoughts are gonna keep coming back, okay? Push them out. When you have that, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that, you already know you worked on it. You already know you healed from it. So you're just going to say, nope, not today, Satan. And you're going to pick something else to think about. And you're not gonna let yourself think about it anymore. And you're going to keep doing it and keep doing it every time those thoughts come into your head. And then eventually you will teach yourself, you will teach your brain to stop thinking thinking that way. You need to train yourself in 2024 to not pay attention to the things that are not serving you, even if that means genuinely forcing yourself to not think about them. In 2024, we are reducing our screen time, okay? So instead of spending that 10 minutes scrolling, take that 10 minutes and stretch. Take that 10 minutes and read. Let's try to do something that is not on our phones 24 seven. Another micro habit is unfollowing all the accounts that don't serve you. If you go on your TikTok and you're scrolling and you're scrolling and it's just nothing but distractions, but jokes and funny stuff, the goal should be opening up your TikTok and your social media and seeing people that make you happy, seeing people that inspire you, seeing people that are in line with your future and your dream self. And if your feed is not like that, if your feed is negativity, if your feed is just full of distractions, Fix it. Unfollow the accounts that don't serve you and follow ones that do. Make it a micro habit to master the art of listening to people. So when you're in a conversation with someone and you have the urge to respond and interrupt them, don't. Make it a habit of saying, okay, this person's talking to me. I'm going to actively listen. I'm not going to listen to respond. I'm listening to understand. And remember, make it a goal to remember that person's name. So when someone says, hi, my name is Madison, you can say, hi, Madison, nice to meet you. If you don't know how to spell that name, say, is that Madison with two Ds or one? remember it, okay? It's, if you struggle with names, as do I, repeat them in that sentence with someone a few times. And if you have to, write it down. Write down anything they mention, if they have children, what they're interested in, if they have any allergies, and make a list of all the people that you know and care about, of their names, how to spell them, where they live, their interests, their dislikes, when you, and remember things. Reach out to them on their birthday. When you know they started a new job, say, have a great first day. Those little things are going to change your life and change someone else's and make people love you. Practice diverting your attention when you have negative thoughts. So when you come in and say, oh, I'm horrible. I don't, I don't deserve to be in this position or, oh, I'm kind of stupid. I, I don't know why I said that or I didn't spell that correctly. Stop yourself. Why are you talking about yourself that way? Would you talk about your best friend like that? No. Would you talk about your sister or your brother like that? No. So why are you talking about yourself like that? You are good enough. You can make mistakes. Everybody makes a mistake. That is why there is literally erasers on pencils, okay? Do not hold yourself down. Do not talk badly about yourself. You made a mistake. So what? Everybody does. You know how many mistakes everyone makes on a daily basis? Tons, okay? Let it go you are good enough. You need to start converting that into positive self-talk because that will change your mind. If you wake up every single day, you play a manifestation like morning playlist, you listen to self-improvement content when you get ready, you look in the mirror, you say, I look beautiful today. I am so smart. Today's going to be a good day. I can make my dreams happen. You pull out your little morning affirmation card, which is a habit we've talked about before. You are going to set yourself up for success. You were telling yourself that the world is your oyster. You can achieve your dreams. You are good enough. And even if you do not believe it, block out those bad habits. Say, no, no, I know. You can say, I know deep down I believe this. I deep down think I'm not good enough. I deep down think I'm not pretty, but don't let yourself say it. Okay. Say, no, not today. I'm just going to gaslight myself in a way and be like, no, I'm pretty. I'm gorgeous. I'm smart. I can do anything. I can do anything. Don't let yourself say that. And eventually one day it will become true. You will change the way that you think. You have that power. You have the power to choose how you speak about yourself. You have the power to wake up every day and choose how you want to spend your time. Yes, it's important to spend time on self-care, to take rest, do not get burnt out, okay? But you have the power to make your dream life and it starts with you. You could wake up right now. You could literally walk out that door after you listen to this episode. Hold your head up high, 
wear an outfit you love know that no matter what anyone says to you that is their own perception it does not matter because what matters is you love yourself the people who care about you love you and you are proud of the things that you are doing every single day okay so take that with you into 2024 okay so if you want to feel fit if you want to feel healthy and nurture your body in 2024 here are your glow up fitness micro habits to start now start lifting weights over doing cardio if you are only doing cardio, you're not going to see the results you want if you want to see muscle definition. If you see those girls who have like nice Michelle Obama arms and the defined like line on their abs, like that is coming from well, first working out and lifting weights and a good diet, which more on later. But I'm telling you, just buy little dumbbells and start lifting your weights. You can do a weighted YouTube routines. You could go and join a female weightlifting class, start lifting weights even once a week, and you will actually start seeing that muscle definition if you're after that. Now, if you are also a gym girly, increase your protein intake. The recommended dietary allowance in terms of protein should be about 0.8 grams of protein for every kilogram that you weigh. But now if you are aiming for fat loss, for muscle growth, that genuinely is not enough. If you are engaging in physical activity every single day, your protein intake should probably range between about 1.2 to 2.2 kilograms of protein a day. Honestly, to make it easier for myself, I just say if I'm X amount of pounds, I'm going to just eat X amount of that in grams of protein. And I know, I know, oh my goodness, that sounds like such a hard thing. That sounds like gym girlies. Oh my goodness. I don't want to be giant. I don't want to be huge and buff. But once I started eating protein, my goodness, my body changed so much. You don't have to diet to look fit. You don't have to not eat. No, you can just choose to eat things that contain the stuff that's going to nourish your body. You're going to be healthier. You're going to feel good because you're actually eating and that is important. Do not starve yourself, okay? And it's actually so easy. You could get protein from things like Greek yogurt. You can get protein for things like protein pancakes in the morning, which are so delicious. Even things like hummus has so much protein in it. This is your sign to just go on TikTok, find a whole grocery list of the foods high in protein and just start trying to track your macros or even just if you're not going to track them just be conscious of how many grams of protein you're kind of consuming in a day this is going to put your fitness goals just into hyperdrive and get the most out of all of that work and all of those hours that you're spending in the gym stretching okay regardless of your fitness goals we should all just stretch we should stretch for a minimum of like 10 minutes a day it is good for you especially if you're working in an office job and it's just going to make you feel amazing and again tapping into your feminine energy okay so now that you have micro habits you're thinking okay those are really good i am feeling motivated but I know you and you're probably thinking okay well now I have all of these micro habits in my head that I'm starting like I'm starting to think about my own new year's resolutions and how I can turn them into micro habits but how do I do that well that is why the next chapter is about how you can take your other goals and turn them into micro habits so you can actually achieve them and change your life in 2024 Start off by picking one new habit, okay? And do not add 101 habits in all at once, okay? Start small and wait until that becomes a habit, until it becomes easier, and then introduce the new habits. Create a vow to yourself. Going back to my episode on feeling-based goals, why do you want to start this habit? How is it going to make you feel? What is your motivation behind it? Focus on enjoying the habit. What benefits does that habit provide you? Tell yourself that. Reiterate that to yourself when you're working on this habit. Watch your mind movie, okay? Be inspired. Tell yourself this is going to take you to your dream life. But when it doesn't look exactly how you vision in your head, it's not aesthetically pleasing. It is difficult. Don't give up. Don't give in to your childish mind. Keep going. And then slowly, as you are adopting these habits, as you are feeling good about them, as you are continuing to not fall off and you're telling yourself, you know, grace, not perfection, add in more of those goals that you have that you want to turn into micro habits every single day. If your New Year's resolution is to get fit and look hot and go to the gym every single day, why don't you just start with, I want to go to the gym for 30 minutes once a week. And that is if you don't work out at all. And then once you go and say, okay, it's easy to go to the gym once a week, add twice a week, add three times a week, add four times a week, figure out your capacity. That's what you can actually maintain and feel good about. And then once you have the gym and you're used to going to the gym, say, okay, now my next fitness goal to help me glow up and go to the gym and increase my fitness journey say, I'm going to start adding more protein to my diet. And you don't have to say, I'm going to go hard and go 150 grams of protein a day. No, you could say, I'm going to start by eating hummus and carrots every single day as a snack. And then you can say, I'm going to have protein pancakes every morning as my breakfast. Start small, build up those micro habits, add another micro habit, 
add another micro habit and then eventually you will get to your big goal and don't forget an essential part of living your dream life is removing those bad habits those triggers from your life if your habit or your new year's resolution consists of quitting something let's say quitting smoking quitting eating snacks past eight o'clock quitting watching netflix for five hours a day yes those are very important goals but because they're consistent of removing a habit that is way harder to achieve than adding on a new habit So before you attempt to just remove that bad habit cold turkey, take those micro habits and add something that's going to compensate for that bad habit. For instance, if you finish your workday and you stream the entire night and do nothing productive, instead of removing that altogether, say, okay, I'm going to add a new habit of reading for an hour before bed. And that will thus reduce your screen time. And then you can say, okay, I'm going to add in the habit of going for a hot girl walk every single day when I'm done work. And then again, it will eat away at that bad habit. And do more and more micro habits that are going to essentially alleviate the bad habit. And then one day it's going to be a lot easier for you to be like, you know what? I don't really do that habit as much anymore. So now I'm going to completely remove it. List your triggers, list your needs and desires and your feelings and figure out why you're doing that bad habit. What leads you to it? work on that problem. I know you're thinking, I'm just gonna go cold turkey. I'm, I've written down all of the glow up micro habits girl that you gave me and I'm going to go do them right now. Some of them, yeah, you can easily do them and start, but for the ones that require more discipline, don't go cold turkey, especially if you're quitting a habit. Start small, be easy on yourself, you will get there. And an important thing to remember is when a habit no longer serves you. It is the start of 2024. Your New Year's resolutions, your goals that you set for yourself might not be aligned with what you are going to be, the person you're going to be by the end of this year. Think about your goals that you had for 2023. Do all of them still align with your dreams? I can guarantee you that you've done more than you thought you could in the year. There's new things that you've been excited about, you're interested in, that you want to do. And especially when you're working on the self-love, the self-improvement aspect, you're going to teach yourself that the sky is your limit. The dreams are just more aligned with you and what you want to be. If you find yourself being like, oh, this goal is no longer aligned with me, don't do it. It is completely okay to just put away a habit and just not work on it anymore if that is not aligned with your actual end goal. There's a difference between giving up out of comfort and what is easy and you don't want to fail and a difference between giving up just because you do not care about that end goal and it doesn't make you happy anymore. Okay, now do you want to know the secret to staying motivated, the secret to becoming the best version of you and actually sticking to all of these goals and becoming the it girl for good? Detach from the outcome. Okay, you are going to get there. You are already working on becoming that girl. Don't think, oh, I'll be happy when I just need this, obsess about this goal, thinking, oh my gosh, this is my whole life. I'm I'm living and breathing for this one thing. It will happen. Believe in yourself. Tell yourself it's going to happen for me, of course, because everything happens to me. Tell yourself, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to obsess about it. I don't have to cry over this goal. I'm going to get it. You know why? Because you believe in yourself. You know that you're working on these micro habits every single day. You know you're going to get to where you want to be. So detach from the outcome. When you attach to something so much, you are going to push it away. But when you detach and know, meh, what will be will be, and I know it's going to be eventually, that thing will come to you and you will feel so much better trying to work on it. Tell yourself that when you slip and fall, that that will just be another lesson that will make you better at change. Don't fear your mistakes. Don't fear your failures. When you fail at something, when something goes wrong, doesn't go as planned, when you get criticized, use that as fuel for your self-improvement journey. Every single mistake is an opportunity to get better at the thing you're trying to master. And criticism and feedback is so crucial for your self-improvement journey. Again, it is your fast pass to success. So don't fear it. Learn how to handle it. Don't cry over it. Don't feel horrible and say, I'm a horrible person. I'm never going to get anything I want in my life. No. You are great, you are good enough, but you're not perfect. That is okay. When someone calls you out and says you could work on this better, don't take it personally. Find any merit of truth in it and try to spin it into a positive thing and use it as fuel to help you achieve your goals. Think about the grand picture, okay? It doesn't matter that you skipped a few days because you struggled and you needed to take a self-care day or you were sick, or maybe you just could not find the motivation and you failed that day of trying to choose your future self over your current self. Don't let that stand in your way of your overall self-improvement journey because if you wake up the next day, even if it's a week, even if it is a month that you've taken off, keep going. In the long term of things, over a whole year, over a decade, if you consistently keep trying, that will result in so much more growth than if you had never tried at all. 
you are going to become the best version of yourself in 2024. I'm your glow up self-improvement fairy godmother and I am so dedicated to holding your hand and giving you all of the tips you need to know on how you can get to your dream life. I know what you're thinking, but girly, you only come out with a new episode every other Tuesday. How am I supposed to get what I need? Girly, I get you and I hear you. And that is why I created a TikTok and an Instagram at the Get Up and Glow podcast that is going to give you daily self-improvement, glow up motivation in a little bite-sized pieces to help you be motivated. So every single day on a weekday, you can wake up and I'm right there with you, helping guiding you along your self-improvement glow up journey. I actually genuinely care about you. I can see and feel your energy through the screen. And I know that's crazy to say, but I just want to say, for every single one of you who leaves a comment, who goes and follows the TikToks or the Instagram, leaves a review on the podcast platforms, thank you so much. You make my day. You are making my own dreams come true. And I promise you that in exchange, I'm going to help you make your own come true. We recently just got 10 thousand plays on the podcast oh my goodness thank you all so much this year you are going to make this your year with the get up and glow podcast right by your side the next video is going to help you further along your self-improvement glow up journey so do not forget to subscribe to the podcast so you do not miss out on an episode here is to this year being the year that we make our dreams come true we're in this together until next episode darling